humans aren't supposed to be here. It's freezing cold. It's 34 degrees. And the pressure is three tons per square inch. That's 6,000 pounds per square inch. We're 15,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Do you want to see what it looks like? It's so dark, you can't even see your hand in front of your face. It is unbelievable to be here. <laughs> I've spent the last two decades of my life exploring the wealth of the oceans and the treasures there. At the time of this story, I was chairman of Odyssey Marine Exploration. And what I've done is tried to find the riches of the ocean, but the real riches aren't necessarily the treasure that we're finding. I'm going to show you some of that today. The real riches are what will determine our future, and I'll share with you that today as well. Let's start with Winston Churchill. In 1941, Churchill needed money to pay for the war, and he ordered India to send silver bars. So the Girasopa was filled with silver bars and other cargo and set sail from Calcutta to England. But Hans Mengerson had other ideas. In U-Boat 101, where he was captain, he shot one torpedo that sunk the Garisopa into the icy cold waters of the North Atlantic. Off the coast of Cork, Ireland, we went looking for this ship. On this ship, we were looking for 2,800 silver bars, each of them weighing about 70 pounds and the size of a loaf of bread. Our search area was marked by the star down on the bottom. It's about 200 square miles. And if we find this ship, it's worth over $100 million. This is the control room of our ship, the brain center. And from here, we deploy the sensitive instrumentation that will help us find it. Magnetometers look for metal objects. And of course, this ship has a lot of metal on it. It's not an easy game, though. It's an expensive game. And others have tried and failed, spending millions of dollars. And you know what? We've kind of been failing, too, at this. We spent 90 days looking for it. And it's September, late September, and the weather is about to turn on us. So we have to figure this out pretty quickly, or else we're going to have to shut it down for the season. And sure enough, we get a reading that looks pretty interesting to us. So we want to look at it further. So off the side of the ship, we deploy our ROV. And this is basically an expensive robot that has a lot of cameras on it. And we go down there, drop 15,000 feet. This is deeper than the Titanic. It actually takes three and a half hours to drop that deep. So we get down to the bottom, and our light shines on this. And this is the first thing we see. And then our light shines on this. And finally, our light shines on this, the hole that the torpedo made in the side of the ship. We knew we had found our ship. We had found the Girasopa. But at, in a real sense, we knew that we'd only really done the easy part. The hard part was still ahead. We'd spent days looking for the Girasopa, but we were going to have to spend months bringing up the cargo that was on it. What happens is that ship was at 15,000 feet underwater, and what we were having to do was like a can opener, cut every deck of the ship apart one deck at a time until we finally found the silver bars. It's not easy to do this at 15,000 feet. And we brought up the first silver bar, and we look at it, and it kind of doesn't look like silver. It, it's yellow. And silver is not supposed to be yellow. And we were pretty concerned. So in fact, if you look, at, look on the screen, you see the silver on the right looks like silver. But those on the right have a yellow tinge to them. Maybe, maybe they were counterfeit silver bars. That wouldn't be good to spend $125,000 a day to run a ship to bring up counterfeit silver bars. Or maybe they weren't silver at all. Or, or maybe they had arsenic in them. And uh, if our crew touched these bars, they could get sick. So we were pretty concerned. We didn't know what we were up against. And so what we had to do is drill a hole through one of the bars. 
And I, that'll make you cry, right, to just drill a hole through a bar. But we did to see if the impurity went all the way through. And sure enough, when we tested it, it did go all the way through. But do you know what it was? Gold. I love pollution, don't you? <laughs> so we brought up 2,792 silver bars, 110 tons of silver from the ship. And sure enough, we did sell it for over $100 million. You want to see one? Well, gee, it's right here. And that's what they look like. Now, this is the size of a loaf of bread, as you can see. If I put my hand up next to it, it weighs a little over 70 pounds. And this is one of the original bars that was pure 0.99 silver. I think we only got 30 or so of those bars. The rest of them were all had impurities in them. And what we had to do was re-refine them in order to sell them, which is what we did. There's over 3 million shipwrecks all over the world in all the oceans. But yet, when I look out in the ocean, of course, it's easy to look at bars like this and say, wow, there's so much money there. But the real wealth of the oceans are in the mysteries and the things hidden underground. 70% of the world is underwater. And we live on the 30% that is above the ground. It's getting pretty crowded up here. And if you look at the population, in 1960, there were 3 billion people up here with us. Well, if you project it out to 2050, there's 9 billion people. How are we going to feed these people? And how are we going to provide the energy and the raw materials for all the things that we need? That's my question. And you know, I think I have the answer. And that's, it's going to be in the ocean. And the 5%, we've only explored 5% of the ocean. And it's going to be in the 70% of the world that we just know so little about. We probably know more about the moon than we do the ocean. You know, the first thing we need to do is feed all these people. How are we going to feed 9 billion people? We've got to become more efficient at farming. And one of the ways to do that is with fertilizer. Fertilizer is phosphate. When you look at a bag of fertilizer, the middle number is actually phosphate. Well, phosphate is a dirty business. Mining is never easy. And in fact, what you have to do is build a road to cut down a bunch of trees to dig a big hole that's maybe two or 300 feet deep. And then you use lots and lots of water, which you end up polluting in order to put that bag of fertilizer in a store. This is really interesting. This is the longest conveyor belt in the world. And you know where it is? Morocco. Morocco controls 80% of all the phosphate in the world. Saudi Arabia only owns about 12% of the oil. Can you see how much control this one country is going to have on the food resources for the world? While we were looking for these silver bars, we found something that was really interesting to us. Off the coast of Mexico, we found, which we think, is probably one of the largest phosphate deposits in the world. It's a world-class deposit. And what's really great about this phosphate mine is it sits right on the surface. We don't have to dig 200 or 300 feet down to get to it. We don't have to build a strip mine and go through all these things that are really bad for the environment, but we can just pull it up from the ocean floor bring it up to our ship, process it, and what's left is really just sand and maybe some shells which we return, but with very little environmental impact. This is actually a strip mine. The largest strip mine in the world is in Chile, in a rainforest. So every time that you need copper, you're really kind of cutting down a tree and, and getting it from a rainforest. That just doesn't seem right. And you know, we're going to need a lot of copper. You know why we're going to need so much copper? Well, here's why. Teslas. Teslas have, believe it or not, an electric motor in them. And that electric motor is made with copper. A Tesla uses three times more copper than an internal combustion engine does. Windmills are the same way. A lot of copper in a windmill. 
in order to feel good about the green economy, and we all drive around in these beautiful electric cars, we're cutting down rainforests and building roads and, and ruining the environment. And so what we want to do is try to find a way to build that Tesla efficiently. And we think we can do that. So our goal is to go out into the ocean and find these deposits of copper, gold, silver, and phosphates that are sitting on the ground of the ocean that have been brought up. If you think of the molten metal in the core of the earth coming up through smokers and hitting the cold ocean water and just sitting there on the ground for us to take. So much easier than mining and destroying the environment. So we have found a way to do good things for the environment at the same time that we feed and provide the resources for the world ahead. You know, when I started this business, I, I got into it really for personal wealth because, well, let's face it, finding shipwrecks just is a fun thing to do. And when you find a lot of these, it, it could make you wealthy, right? Or make our shareholders wealthy. As I was doing this, I discovered that there's a lot that's being done for humanity through what we're doing. Today, we started our discussion at 15,000 feet in the darkness. And yet, now when I go down deep into the ocean, I don't think of darkness. I see light. I see a bright light for future generations. Thank you very much.